Welcome back to the first off-season edition of The Preview Show! Hi, I'm Casey Campbell, and you know that's Mitchell Burr, and we already know that. Um, well, it's the off-season. Well, I know there's racing this weekend. IMSA's at Petit Le Mans is this weekend for IMSA. Um, and then, of course, the NHRA finals are in Pomona. And, of course, Formula One is this weekend in, in Brazil. We also have the Governor's Cup this weekend, too. So plenty of racing going on, but it is the first weekend of the NASCAR off-season, bud. How's it going? It's going good. I'm, I already missed NASCAR. I mean, I'm, I'm very much of a, a shorter schedule, but all of a sudden we're in the first week and there's not much to look forward to this weekend. I'm just like, man, it'd be nice to have a cup race this weekend. Well, you know what? There has been a lot this weekend. A lot of news. That's true. Been. And it started like the, literally the day after um, the cup championship as uh as kyle larson continues to make his way through los angeles a major purchase was announced as speedway motorsports has acquired dover motorsports inc so what that means is dover motorsports inc which owns dover or the monster mile they also own the nashville super speedway um that will be now under the property of smi the sale will go through um towards the end of the year but this is a big deal because basically um, this is, this goes into the hands of SMI and a lot of people were talking about, Oh, everyone, they're going to drop Dover and then they'll, they'll be in a better position to drop Nashville super speedway. Once the fairgrounds is ready to go, that's not a guarantee, bud. The Nashville, then who knows what the fairgrounds are going to do. Obviously, if you don't know, if you live around there, you know, the politics of the, that is the Nashville fairgrounds. Absolutely. I feel like, especially with Nashville Super Speedway, they had a really good weekend last year. And obviously the fairgrounds aren't coming next year. I don't think there's a guarantee that they're there the year after that either, especially with, like, with what you said, with all the politics that are around that. As long as NASCAR has some sort of footing in Nashville, I think Nashville Super Speedway is safe. And if they can continue to produce big weekends like they did last year, they're going to be fine. And they might even force NASCAR to think about maybe two weekends in Nashville. Dover, on the other hand, that one might need to be a little worried. But again, I think they're probably fine for now. But who knows? It's just one of those things where it'll be interesting to watch how it all plays out. That's a big market there, too, because you're surround. I mean, Dover, Delaware surrounds a lot of cities, not that far from Philadelphia, um, not that far from Washington, D.C., um, two really big markets, also the Baltimore area as well. So basically, you pick up the, the that really that Midwest, the Back, basically, the Northeast gets hit again with another hospital there. But I, I think Dover's safe for a little bit. Don't get rid of Miles the Monster. Um, exactly. We need to keep the coolest trophy in NASCAR right now is Miles. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, the Clash format got introduced. We'll talk about that maybe next week or, I don't know, when it comes out. We'll have it up. We'll, we'll maybe talk about it later. But um, there's been some news. Front Row Motorsports had some uh, – had some stuff this week to announce. Of course, there are going to be two cars next year, 34 and 38. We didn't know if there was going to be two cars because, you know, they were in talks of they were, uh, I know they were in talks with like 2311 and apparently Front Row walked away from them. And now they're going to run two cars uh, next year. But the big twist in all this is Anthony Alfredo will not return to the 38 next year. As well, they're also reevaluating what their truck program looks like, which had a pretty stout year. Yeah, that's it's very interesting. I think there is even at one point concern of where are we even going to see front row motorsports in Cup next year. We heard concerns from Michael McDowell talking about he wasn't sure what he was going to do, but it is nice to see those guys come back. They had a pretty solid year 2020 or 2021 we're in, and Michael McDowell obviously won the Daytona 500. He looked really strong throughout, I'd say, the first half of the season. Maybe not the best, the second half results, but. So it's nice to see that team remain in the sport. I know we are, we're very focused on seeing new teams come into NASCAR, but it's nice to see those guys stay in the sport as well, especially as an established team. And now another spot's opened up in that cup series and who knows who's going to take that ride. Yeah. Who knows? It'll be, uh, it'll be interesting. There's a lot of names that are out there to try to see what, what that could happen. Um, Thor sport racing announced, uh, well, Allison Thorson confirmed this on Sirius XM this week. That 2021 Cup um, Truck Series champion Ben Rhodes would return to the team, and Matt Crafton will also return to to Thor Sport Racing. The other two trucks, uh, they will run four trucks. They did confirm that. 
but TBA on that. But or sports, a team that doesn't really change that often. Um, like it's kind of like front row. They don't change a whole lot, but it's good to see the champ back. And, and uh, you know, it's the, the iconic 88 car, you know, Charlie crawl always jokes that uh, oh, that's a throwback every week. Uh, of course he used to work there, but uh, overall good to see Ben Rose and Matt Crafton back again. Yeah. And I don't think it's a surprise to see those two named to be coming back. They are in the championship for this weekend. Ben obviously won the championship. Matt had a good performance, you know, like you said, not much changes there. I think the biggest change that we've seen over there in the last few years is the fact that Grant Enfinger and Christian Eckes were splitting the ride. But other than that, it's been a pretty status quo team. And unless if something opens up for Ben Rhodes, I think that's probably his home for a while, as far as I'm concerned. And you looked at his press conference from this past weekend. He seems pretty happy there. I mean, why wouldn't he be? He's the new champion there. He was also drunk when he did that press conference, too. This is true. This is true. <laughs> I mean, of course, um, I don't want to plug myself, but go check out my interview with the with 2021 um, Truck Series champion Ben Rhodes. Uh, got a fun, had a fun conversation with him. Got to talk about all that, winning the championship and more. Uh, ben Rhodes always a good guy to talk to. Uh, um, always, uh, I've gotten to know Ben Rhodes a lot over the years. So um, go check out that interview. It's on my channel there too. Um, there's been a lot of crew chief news besides, of course, last week, you know, speaking of crew chiefs, uh, let's stick with the truck series a little bit. Uh, well, actually, I think we need to go to the cup series and then I'll go there. Um, Dave Ellens, of course, who was with Noah Gregson announced during Phoenix week that he would leave junior motorsports to apparently go to a cup team. It was reported that he was going to go to RPM and then RPM confirmed that that was cap that that was happening. So Dave Allen's gets to be a, gets to be a uh, cup series crew chief. Well, we know he can get it done in the Xfinity series. He's won championships, you know, with William Byron and with Tyler Reddick had to remember that for a second, but um, yeah, he gets, uh, gets a first upper, a first crack at the truck series. Yeah. I think that's a great move for him and everybody involved. I think he's definitely somebody that can make an organization better. And he's proven that. First, well, I, I said truck series. I should have meant, I meant cup series. Yeah. I got what, I got what you meant. Yeah. I I've, I've, I've done that making word up there. It, it happens. Um, speaking of there, Jerry Baxter, who used to be the crew chief of the 43 team, he's going to go to trucks with DGR and Tanner gray. He'll be the crew chief of the 15. And I think for that team, they just kind of need stability because I think, uh, I think it was Joe Shrigley from Toby Christie.com who, who put this out there. I think he had like six or seven crew chiefs last year. Yeah, that's crazy. And I think that's, like you said, it's just a team. You got a bunch of young drivers with uh, Taylor, Tanner, Haley Deegan. You just need stability with all of them. And if he was running around with six crew chiefs last year, having a veteran presence like Jerry Baxter, who we've seen can elevate a team as well. I think that's going to be a very, very good decision there for DGR. That's trying to build up these young drivers. So yeah, definitely, definitely good there. Also more, also more crew chief news. Uh, Harrison Burton now knows who his crew chief is. Brian Wilson, who, of course, who was the crew chief for Austin Sindrick in the Xfinity series for the 22 team at Team Penske. He'll make the jump up to the Wood Brothers and the 21 team. Of course, Jonathan Hassler, who was the crew chief for about half the year when they let Greg Irwin go in the 21 team this year is going to head over to be Ryan Blaney's crew chief, of course, because Todd Gordon is retired. Todd Gordon has retired after this season. So yeah, um, Brian Wilson gets a shot at the, uh, at the Wood Brothers and which leaves the question, what happens with Penske's Xfinity program? That's been a, that's a, that, that's a, that's a big, that's a big question of, of sorts. Absolutely. And we've seen in media availabilities where team Penske representatives have been like, They've went from, oh, we definitely want to have an Xfinity series program back next season. Then it's kind of been like, well, we're not sure what the Xfinity program is going to be like next year. We might have an Xfinity program. It doesn't seem like it has the brightest of future looking ahead to it, which is a shame. I mean, Team Penske has been one of the best teams, if not the best team in the Xfinity series over the last two years with Austin Sendrick and his run of dominance. And Xfinity series is a, a series where it's like, you want to see more top teams in there. You don't want to see less. So 
hopefully something happens with either Team Penske or that equipment where we continue to have good drivers in the Xfinity Series because I want to see as many competitive cars as possible on Saturdays. We got a great package there. We got a great series there. I just want as much competitiveness as possible, especially with the field that we got there next year. You're going to have to have a lot of competitive cars to go up against a guy like Ty Gibbs. I want to see a very competitive field. <laughs> yeah, and he's not even confirmed to go there. I mean, yeah. I, I don't true, know. true. I Allegedly. Mean, yes. <laughs> um, remember, it's not, it's not official until true. it's official. Um, exactly. <laughs> no, it is official. Of course, Alpha Prime may, Racing, which is now, which is formerly Martins Motorsports, now Alpha Prime Racing. Ryan Ellis has been, is the next driver that has been announced to go to that 44 team. So that's now five drivers that's been confirmed for that team. Of course, Tommy Joe Martin, Cesar Baccarella, Raja Carruth, Andy Lally, and Ryan, and now Ryan Ellis. Good opportunity. Ryan had a lot of good runs last year for BJ McLeod. Yeah, I think this is a good opportunity for everybody around. Obviously, Ryan, who's been he's been itching and inclined just to get one start in any of the top three series. This past year, he obviously got a little bit more opportunities. And it's nice to see him get an opportunity and be interesting to see if he can make the most of it. And I think that entire team right there, it's just these guys, I think it's kind of a perfect combination. You got a lot of guys that want to prove themselves, and you got a team that's trying to work from – kind of the ground up obviously they have existing conditions and everything but all intensive purpose is a new team and i think all these different drivers i know sometimes you want to have one driver i think having multiple drivers in this situation is going to work really well for the future of this team yeah for sure and there's still a lot of a lot of things to be announced um pretty soon here um i know that um we did this um let's uh what are your checkered and black flags for the 2021 season. Jack could play, obviously, has to guard Hendrick Motorsports. I mean, last year, Chase Elliott obviously won the championship, but what else did Hendrick Motorsports even do last season? I feel like the rest of the team kind of had a forgettable 2020. And this year, they just came out swinging, and every single one of those guys looks really good going into the future. William Byron, even after he was eliminated in the playoffs this year, he looked really strong. Alex Bowman obviously had multiple wins. He looked really strong. And then obviously have Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson. I'm not going to get into the debate of who the flagship driver is anymore. But <laughs> honestly, you got like a, I, I mean, this might be too big of a comparison, but you got kind of like a Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson field there right now, where you got two guys that can go out there and have a pretty good chance of winning each and every single weekend. And, I think that's probably going to stay the case regardless of the car, regardless of the package, regardless of whatever. I think those two guys are going to be tough to beat. So Hendrick Marsports absolutely gets my checkered flag for the year. Black flag for the year. Mm -hmm. I have to think about that one. Let me hear your checkered flag while I think of a black flag. Um, You know, I got several. Uh, I'm going to think of, you know, well, you took mine, so I'll go with – how about Daniel Hemmer? He finally gets a championship. Uh, finally gets a championship, um, you know, after winning – after only winning the last race of the year and now becomes the champion. Uh, can't wait to see what he does. And I'm also going to go with Ben Rhodes, too, the two, two, uh, two champions there. And then you also – and then uh, let's, let's just go with the overall season. That was, I mean, this overall, this season overall was pretty good. Yeah, I agree with that, actually. I feel like there's a lot of criticism and whatever. But for the most part, I'd have to say most of the races this year were pretty good and pretty good watchable. And there was a lot of storylines. There was a lot happening without, like, too many, like, bad storylines that we've seen in previous years. I feel like a lot this year focused more on the racing, I feel like. And I feel like that created stories within itself. And it really was a good season. I don't know if I'd go as far as to say the best season ever or whatever Fox was promoting at the beginning of the season. But it was, it was a very good season this year. I, I'll definitely agree with that. Yeah, it's not, yeah, it was a pretty good season. All right, I got, I, I, I got, a, I got a few black flags on this one. Um, I think the biggest one is Stuart Haas racing. It's a good one. 
yeah, that that's it's not good. Um, just not an. It was. It just was. It wasn't an. It just was not a good um, um, year for that one for that for that team. And then I really can't think of any others. We got this one. I mean, it wasn't a total like bad year for this person, but the fact that John Hunter Nemechek didn't walk away with the championship in the truck series. I feel like that's going to leave a sour taste in his mouth for a while. And really, I know we talk about, and some people have been skeptical of the playoff format. And, oh, if it was the old format, he would have won the championship easily. But the last half of the season, man, John Hunter Nemechek didn't look like a guy that was just going to knock everybody out. He looked like just another guy in the truck series. And I know John Hunter Nemechek is really trying hard to – essentially recreate his career and get those opportunities but you got to take advantage of the opportunities that are there for you and I, obviously what happened to him at phoenix is kind of it's a racing deal but that entire that second half of the season i feel like there's a couple of missed opportunities for john Hunter to check in he's got another chance next year to capitalize and i think he really needs to come out and just say hey this is my series i'm going to dominate I deserve an Xfinity Series ride. And I think I need to see more of that from John Hunter Nemechek. I know I'm probably one of the few people giving him a black flag this year, but it just leaves me a sour taste in my mouth. I think it, I think it leaves a sour taste in John Hunter Nemechek's mouth too. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, who, know, who knows what will happen. All right, well, that's going to do it for this week. There's no race to preview, no picks to have be had. Oh, yeah, but speaking of picks, ho, 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 you just wait till next year. We're going to have some fun with them. I'm not going to say anything until next year. So you'll have to figure, so you'll just have to wait till then. Um, all right. For Mitchell Brewer, I'm Casey Campbell. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you next week. I don't know. We could have some more fun stuff next week. I don't know.